Hey man, can I use your restroom? Yeah, it's down the hall that way, but the door doesn't lock. Oh, oh, okay. Oh yeah, come on. Gotta get going. Okay, whatever. <sighs> hey, anybody in there? Hey, no, no, no some, somebody's in there. No! So I've got this pocket door that I can't lock. It's uh, sunken down. If you go ahead and look down along the edge of the door there, you can see that the reveal's all kind of jacked up. But the big problem is that basically this was installed crooked or the hardware has come down up in there and I can't get to it or adjust it. You see how high the door is in this jam? And the solution to this would be to pull off the door frame and start pulling these pieces of wood out to get to the track. And this is what everybody's solution is. And I hate that solution because I don't want to disassemble the entire door jam just to adjust one little piece of hardware here. Also, considering the fact that this may require adjustment like every year or two. So what I want to do is give myself permanent access to being able to adjust these things. And eventually, I may even want to change this door slab out. So I want to have access to the hardware up there. Um, now I've tried everything, right? I've tried unscrewing this track and lowering it down to the point where I can get to it and I can't get access. I've also tried um, every other solution that I've looked out there for and they all just kind of stink. They sell adjustment wrenches for pocket doors that have like a little angle that can get up in there if you go like this. And it's not even gonna work in here. Everything is just so tight. The tolerances don't allow for me to use that kind of wrench. I've tried going in from this way. I've used my little inspection camera and there's no way to get enough swing on even a ratcheting wrench up here. So I've got to get access to the hardware and I don't want to disassemble the whole door jam. So I had a good little idea here and I haven't done this for a long time, but we're going to do it today. You see, what I need is access to that hardware. I need some sort of a hole up in here where I can adjust that. That means I don't necessarily need to take this off and I don't want to pull it out and have to deal with re-nailing it and all that junk. I only want to remove this top piece of casing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this top piece of casing out, just scribe that little piece of caulk there with a razor blade, and I'm gonna remove this, caulk it back into place later. And I'm gonna cut myself a little access hole here that's hidden behind this piece of trim. That way, if I ever need to adjust it in the future, all I have to do is pull this single piece of casing off, and I have a wide open adjustment hole here. So I need to cut a hole right here. It's gonna come through right here and show me the hardware. And nobody's ever gonna notice that, man. You never look up in there when you're walking through these doorways. So. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's get that piece of casing off. Now, here's the problem, right? Everybody's gonna say, just go ahead and move this catch down, chisel it out. But the thing is, you'll just keep lowering it and lowering it and lowering it and lowering it and damaging this piece of wood, damaging your jam, until the door's hitting the floor, which isn't gonna work for me. Uh, here, let's see. So there you can see where it should be catching, and you can see how that is lower than where that's gonna work, right? Also, I've got the door hitting in weird spaces, like down here at the bottom, where they've spaced this out to catch. And that's stupid. I don't know why they put this thing in, probably so it didn't match up with the catch, but it still doesn't work. It's just in the way. And the hardware doesn't line up. You can see it in there. It's not quite square with this piece of hardware, and it needs to come up just a little, so. Let's adjust the door. Let's remove this ridiculous striker down here and let's get this thing to line up. Okay, let's get this piece of casing off. I'm just gonna use a five and one. Also in the painting aisle, there's little tiny pry bars called a Heidi bar. That's my favorite. I can't find mine, but this is gonna work just fine. Let's go. A Little bit of caulk there. Let's cut into the corner and give it total relief. Very carefully trying not to damage what's there. Very cool. I'm going to try to just lightly scribe the caulk out of these miters. Or bevels or whatever you want to call them. This one's already open and the top I don't think is even caulked to the wall. Um, boy, we got a caulking video coming up here, I'm telling you. All right, let's try to shove this in without causing any damage to the frame. 
Nice, it's already opening up. I'm just gonna keep lightly prying at it until I can fit that whole tool up in there. There we go, give it some very light prying. You can hear it coming. It sounds like somebody may have foamed this thing. I can hear something sticking in the back. There we go. We're just gonna work it out. No nails in the middle, it appears they only nailed the corners. So we're gonna try to work right at those nails. I'm gonna get that five and one right up there behind that nail. Softly pry, no need to use speed. Just let the leverage of the tool remove it nice and easy. All right. Nice and easy, good. Those nails are coming out nice and straight, that's cool. I can pry the rest out with my fingers. I'm gonna do the same over here and just slide this over. Nice and slow, nice and slow, not putting too much force on it to tear it out. Here we go. Now I'm going to pry up here against the wood, not against the drywall, just so I don't mar up the bottom of that wood. Here we go. Top nails are out. One more light pry up high on this bottom wood. There it is. All right, so here's what we're into. You can see how this is constructed, how there's this piece here down low. The track is all the way up here. The wheels run about this high. The adjustment's right in here. Uh, I can probably not even touch this piece. And as you can see, the trim board comes down to here. So I can hide a cut that comes down at least that low. So I'm going to cut away from where I want to nail and probably put a view hole right in here. So. And just leave myself a little mark of what range I want to open this hole up and I want to leave enough room to actually be able to twist the wrench. So let's go ahead and cut that. One of the biggest problems when you do contractor work or handyman work is dust management. And you're going to have homeowners that no matter what you do are going to say that you left dust everywhere. So this is one chance that you have to engage the homeowner in the project, although I highly recommend not doing that just because of liability a lot of the time. But get your shop vac out. Don't let the dust fall everywhere. Just catch it as it's falling and do yourself a good job. Let them hold the hose for you for something simple like this where the tools aren't really dangerous and there's no chance of anybody getting hurt. Give them a dust mask, all that, so they can't say they were inhaling dust, you know. But Try to vacuum it while you're cutting it, as this is one little cut, and it's not worth having to go through the whole dusting and cleanup process afterwards. So, Now let me be clear, you can do this with a clamp or some painter's tape on your own and tape up the vacuum nozzle there. But I do like using this trick when you have a homeowner that maybe just doesn't seem like they quite trust you, or you need to set an example to them that you care about their house and the dust management as much as they do. Sometimes this will get the customer completely out of your way for the rest of the job. On the other hand, you might end up with a very bored homeowner with a ton of time on their hands constantly asking you if they need you to hold tools. It's your job to know your customer and decide if this is right for you or not. Let's go. Kick that vacuum on. I'm going to use this type of blade. That's going to give me a little more control to kind of get in there and cut this out from the front and the back. As you can see, the difference between this blade's teeth and this blade's teeth are quite different. This is much more coarse and slowly you can get through some little nails and screws with this. This one too, but you're going to chew it up because they're not bi-directional teeth. See how that has that kind of cross-cut action to it, if you can see that. I doubt you can. So let's try this guy out. All right, now we're gonna try to split this piece in half so I can get it out in two chunks instead of just fighting one big chunk. I would not suggest having your homeowner vacuum you. You can do that yourself. Okay, so we're not going to try to force this piece out. It doesn't matter if we even have to get in there and cut some diagonals. Whatever it takes, we want to cause the least amount of damage as we can. So take your time here. Of course, we can always try to bump it out from the back. 
go. We're starting to get the debris out. All right, so we're fighting it. We're gonna make one more cut here and try to break it into smaller pieces. Okay, there we go. Now we can just start to pick that out of there. One little piece at a time. Start giving us some working room. Now this one ought to have room to slide out. There we go. So just to restate what we're doing, every time we adjust this door, we don't want to have to pull this out and this out and add new brads and touch up the paint over the brads and caulk it in. We just want to be able to remove this piece of trim and have an adjustment hole. So now you can see that through this adjustment hole, I have access to my adjustment hardware. I can get to that toggle there that lets me open up the hardware and actually reset it properly. I could not get to that previously. And if I need to get to the back hardware, it's right here as well. So I actually have access, which is super awesome. When we put that trim back on there, you can see that that is going to cover up exactly where we were. I just got this one little dude right here where I got a little aggressive, but it's only in the front. And I'll just cover that with some caulk and you'll never know that was there. Um, but take your time. It's time to adjust this hardware. And here's what it looks like from the back. So I've got this, right? Now you're like, oh, but even when you put the trim on, everybody's gonna see this. Nobody's looking up there. And granted, these little holes and stuff, you can clean this up with just some caulk. You don't need to pull out the paint. Just put some white caulk up in there. It's inside. And then um, once the trim's on it, That little hole's gonna go dark. Now that's only seeing that because we're like way in there, but as you're walking in here, you're not gonna notice that at all. And plus, if you really wanna get crazy, pull out a little touch-up paint and paint the inside of that hole white because it'll just disappear for you. All right, now the other thing you can do if you're feeling real zesty is get yourself a little chunk of two by four or something like that and just cut yourself out a little wooden plug that can slide in here and you can put a little bit of caulk on that'll just flush out back here. Uh, if you really wanna do that for the sake of the finish work, go for it. But I'm not doing that today, I'm just showing you how to get to this hardware. So let's adjust it. Whoever did this previously put this little stopper here. And the reason for this is because he tried to gap out the crookedness in the door jam to accommodate the fact that the latch wasn't lining up. Um, I'm gonna remove this because now the base of the door, once I straighten it out, is gonna strike this and it won't be able to reach from the latch to the catch, uh, it'll be held off the wall by this little thing. So let's go ahead and pop that little guy off of there. But the reason that these things were here in the first place is because this door was out of adjustment already at some point. And instead of addressing the problem with the hardware being out of adjustment, somebody decided to do just a little less work and try to kind of shim out the latch, which is just so stupid. Like, don't fix problems by creating solutions that work around the problem. Just address the problems. I opened this hole up a little more because I wanted to get up to the top of the hardware and be able to see all of it, and it doesn't really affect anything to do it this way anyway. So there's that hardware there, and I've checked it out. And basically what we've got going on is up there in the roller, that wheel set has a screw in it, right? Well. It's got this adjusting bolt in it. And on the top, there's a welded nut. So there's really nothing to adjust up in that roller. It's just about adjusting this bolt head right here. That is not spinning up and down on this, but it is a fixed part of this bolt for adjustment. By tightening this up, the door goes up. By tightening it down, the door goes down and um, this little guy theoretically locks it so it can't twist, although I am not seeing evidence that that works. I think somebody stuck screwdrivers up inside here so many times and tried to hit it that they damaged it pretty bad and it doesn't really do that job anymore. Uh, but here's another latch here that theoretically would make it fall out and I don't need to play with that. So get that wrench in there. In this case, it's a half inch wrench. way makes that go up so if the threads go that way 
that's the way I'm gonna want to adjust this to bring it up. So I'm on like turn number three there. Let's see if we can, oh yeah. I can hear the latch hitting the hardware, which is a first. So let's see what we got here. Not quite hitting yet. And part of that too is this thing has hit this thing so many times that this is all dinged in and it can't reach behind it. So guess what? We gotta pull this thing out and ding it flat too. Let's go ahead and pull this little guy out and go bang him flat with the hammer. All right, so let's pull this off. You can see they never even really cleaned out the bottom of that mortise or whatever this is. Uh, so this is where the catch would be right here and it's gonna be grabbing all that debris. But also this little guy you can see how dinged up that is from just having that latch rammed into it over and over again. So we're gonna go flatten this up and we're gonna clean out that mortise. So I'm gonna find a nice flat piece of concrete here. And I wanna bang this out, but what I'm gonna do is get a little piece of cardboard here because I don't wanna scratch the face up of this any more than it has to be banging it on the concrete. So we'll just go like that. There, it's kind of bowed out now. We'll just straighten her out a little. I'm gonna sandwich it in the cardboard to make sure I'm not striking the front side of it any more than it needs to be. Look how, you can see how many, like hundreds of times that thing has struck it in the wrong place trying to catch. So that is super lame. There we go, that's looking much flatter. Let's go install it. See, I'll show you something else here. Because they didn't want to bang out that dent in this thing and the latch wasn't catching it, they just tried to shim it with a little piece of trash and bring that hardware out. This is like a bad fix followed by another cheese ball fix. Let's go ahead and get that little guy off of there. Okay, that's a little bit better now. At least it's clean. It's all scarred up in there so you can't really see it, but it's much cleaner now. It'll catch. So let me install that plate again. Okay, we've got that little guy back in and you can see there's all sorts of weird little paint scratches all over this door frame. So I'll probably get up some touch up paint after this and just kind of hit a few things. I might even paint the door because it looks like since a piece of hardware was missing, it's kind of scraping in the door frame anyway. So well, it's a chance to touch it up, I guess. So let's see now if we can get this thing to catch. All right. Uh-huh. She locked. Yeah, pulling it pretty hard. Can't seem to get it to unlock. Oh yeah. Sweet. That's sweet, I've lived in this house for two years and I've been meaning to fix this, thank goodness. Oh yeah, you can just see all the weird scratches on the door and stuff. We'll just touch this thing up with some paint later on today. So, there it is. We were able to just adjust this and I've learned that this door jam is not totally plumb, so I'm gonna leave this striker in instead of digging it deeper in there. Plus it gives a little airflow through the pocket so that the bathroom fan can pull air through. But uh, that's gonna work. Now that it's clean enough to catch, this is all flattened out so it can actually catch. I removed that striking area down here that was causing the door to butt up against it because the door, door frame is out of plumb like this, just a tiny bit, and it's enough that this part of the door was always striking this and never reaching this. Plus, of course, the door was out of adjustment. So the latch was hitting super low and could have never hooked up over this. So now I've got good access up here for adjustments in the future. I may even change out the roller hardware um, at some point, but for now it seems that it'll be fine. Uh, and the other thing that I could do to bring this door to a little more conformity with the door jam would be to bring the back roller up as well, but I don't really think that that's an issue. Everything looks pretty good here, and it actually closes, which is lovely. I'm so happy I can finally lock that thing. 
Because up until now, it'd be like, hey man, can I use your bathroom? And you'd be like, yeah, but the door doesn't lock. So like, you know, just make sure if anybody comes to the door, you just say I'm in here, which is embarrassing because nobody wants to talk through a door when they're taking a dump. So now all I got to do is put this top piece of trim back on and we're done. Um, the caulking in this bathroom and most of this house is atrocious. Uh, I mean, that's a later video, but you can see this is about the quality of the caulking work in this bathroom. And the rest of the house isn't much different. And we're going to do something about that in a, probably our next video will be about caulking because I am very good at caulking. And I have seen a lot of people on YouTube acting like they know how to caulk and giving the worst tips that involve getting water everywhere. And it's just a mess and it's unnecessary. But I mean, this right here was tipped just using a cut tip on a caulk tube and pressed into the corner. And it's a great example of how not to caulk, even though this is how half of the YouTube instructional videos tell you how to caulk. This is what you're going to end up with is a dirty separated caulk seam and it happens all the time uh same here you can just see where it all separates because it didn't really bond any corners so i'm going to show you how to fix that in the next youtube video as opposed to trying to bang these nails in which works sometimes especially into sheetrock but i'm pretty much hitting wood with all four and i'm going to fight these coming out so what i really want to do especially because i cut this access out is i want to make it easy to remove this in the future and what i'm going to do is just caulk it into place at the edges and across the top line so it's very easy to remove with a razor blade in the future if I need to make an adjustment. Then I don't have to deconstruct things and re-nail it over and over again. So the way you remove a brad is, if you can't get it from the back, stick a sacrificial piece of wood on the front to pry against. So we don't want to pry against our finish work and uh, probably the wrong pliers for it, but there you go. On the back, what you want to do is if these nails are already still sticking out the back, don't try to get it from the front and risk any damage. Pull the nail through the back. There you go. I can hear it pulling through. There you go. Pull the nail out the back. And then you haven't made the damage in the front any worse. That's the nail we pulled out. That caulk that was capping is still there. Let's do another one. Right? Pull it out through the back. That's the hole that was already bumping out the front, but we haven't got some big old messed up hole. Here's where the next one that we're going to pull out is. Whenever you pull trim, I take, I mean, almost every time I pull trim, I end up doing this. Uh, I have a little nail puller thing, but I pull all the nails out the back because then you don't take on any new damage in the front and you're able to re-nail. Uh, man, the caulking and finish work in this house is horrible. Anyway, so now what I've got to cover up when I put this on is two little nail holes where the old brads were already popping out anyway. Trying to match up the caulk lines I already had. Maybe I'll drive a little finish nail, maybe just one in there to hold it in place and reuse one of these holes anyway. But I think what I'll probably do is hit it with a fresh bead of caulk across the top. Yeah, look, see that's damage left from the last guy. I mean, come on. Probably run a bead of caulk across the top. Let that dry so it doesn't want to move up when I do the rest of my caulking. And then I'll press in and finish this line here, and that'll be done. And if I ever need to get it out again, I just need to give it a light cut across the top, light cut here, and I'll be able to lift this right back out and have access to my adjustment hole. So that, my friends, is a different way to repair a pocket door. Now, the other thing that can happen is you can just have these doors fall off the track sometimes, which is a pain, and I've seen guys try to stick like zip ties and string up there and pull it loose or you disassemble the whole door jam and it's just a pain in the butt. And you can do that if you want to, but honestly, if you just get yourself that adjustment hole, I mean, things are gonna go pretty good. And if you're freshly installing a pocket door, <clears throat> I would say when you're installing this piece, leave yourself an access hole, cut your jam and build it this way so that there's a clean access hole here. And then just put a little plug in there so that you don't really see it from this side, but I mean, I'm going to be getting out some paint and caulk. So it's all going to get caulked up and just hidden here. And then all there really is, is that adjustment hole up there. I'm telling you, nobody's going to notice it the way it is already once it's painted. But you can't see that. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. When you're just walking in the bathroom, nobody cares. Nobody's going to see it but you.
If you are doing this professionally for a customer, cut the wooden plug and make it look great before you leave because that will matter to them. Even let them know what you did and why you did it. But yeah, go ahead and cut yourself that little plug if you want out of some wood. Just stick it in there loosely with some caulk and touch it up with some paint and you're gonna be good to go. But that is it my friends. That is how to fix the hardware and the striker on an out of adjustment pocket door. Well, that's pretty much it. A couple of quick tricks that I've learned over the years to deal with pocket doors. Uh, I always like having that adjustment hole cut into the frame behind the casing because, you know, you can get to it quickly again. And how many times in your life do you want to deconstruct the same door jam? You just kind of give yourself the access to fix it again in the future if you need to and not worry about doing the same fix over and over and over again. Um, of course, a little Loctite up in that adjustment screw wouldn't hurt. I don't think it was ever installed properly in the first place, honestly, so I'm just happy to have it adjusted. And if I ever do have a problem with it slipping again like that, which it hasn't moved in the two years I've been here, but if it does, yeah, maybe I'll put a little Loctite up in there. But either way, check out your striking plate, make sure it's not beat in. Check out that mortise hole behind the striking plate and make sure that it's not clogged with debris. Make sure that the top or bottom of the door isn't hitting the door frame. Uh, before the latch can catch the catch because that could be causing you a problem and of course find a way to get your adjustment in there i hope that helped you guys this has worked great for me in the past it's always worked for me and now i'm probably going to pull out the call gun and a little bit of touch-up paint and clean up some of the stuff that doesn't look so good that's left over from people before me and from me making this repair next video i'm going to do is going to be all about caulking and i am telling you if there's one thing i am a pro at it is caulking. I did years of granite install with a guy that taught me a couple great techniques, and I have always had great luck with finish work. I love finish work. You really need to take your time on the details because it's the stuff you'll see, and it's the stuff you'll be proud of if you do it right. But I'll tell you one thing, not a lot of people know how to caulk the right way. Even these guys that are pro at home service at Home Depot and Lowe's and contractors, I've seen guys that have been in the business 20, 30 years that still don't know how to run a caulk gun. I've seen painters that paint every day that still don't know how to use a caulk gun, although I'd argue the painters are typically the ones that do know how to use it. But I'm going to show you the ways that work for me. So be looking for the next video. It'll come out in the next couple of weeks when I'm feeling well enough to make it. Until then, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Please like, please comment, please subscribe on the video. I appreciate you all being here in the discussions that we have in the comment section. Have a great day. God bless. Don't be afraid to try to fix something. Don't be afraid to try to make something better. Thank you.